In this video, I tie together a few of the pieces that we put together in many of the previous videos. I show how to go from individual demand curves to a market demand curve. And I show how to go from cost curves and number of firms to a market supply curve. We've got two segments of the market. One segment is seniors and the other one is kids. For the seniors demand curve, the intercept is 120. If we wanted to get a price of zero on our demand curve, we have to plug in quantity of 20. So there's the seniors demand curve. And we can draw the kids demand curve. The intercept is 60 with the slope of 3. How do we go from inverse demand curves like this to a market demand curve? All we do is we ask at each price, say a price like 10, what is the quantity in each of these demands? Then we add up those quantities and we can go over here to our market and proceed to give ourselves uh, a point on our market demand curve. Now there is a much faster way to do this. What we can do is algebraically solve for the quantities and notice that at every price for which this is valid, all we are doing is we're adding quantities. So let's go ahead and solve or invert these inverse demands and get ourselves some actual demand curves. In both cases, I just subtracted the price from both sides and I, sub and I added the quantity times the slope to both sides. And then I just divide by the, uh, the coefficient in front of the quantities and there we have it. We have our actual demand curves. Now, what I pointed out just a second ago is that we just add the quantities. Here are the quantities, and when it is valid for these, we can go ahead and add. But it's valid when these quantities are bigger than zero, and when the prices are bigger than zero. So, this red demand curve applies for prices between zero and 120. Blue demand curve applies to prices between zero and 60. So when we add these two demand curves, we're really only adding over the prices between 0 and 60. But then again, if you think about that, that makes sense when you look at the diagram. Between 0 and 60, we're adding both demand curves. And once we get above that, the market demand curve is only going to come from the senior segment of the market. So we can just add both of these to get our industry quantity. So there is our market demand curve for price between 0 and 60. Um, for a price bigger than 60, we just get the red market demand curve. So let's go ahead and graph that. So this demand curve hits the quantity axis. When the price is 0, that means that 40 is where the quantity is going to be. And if we were to draw all the way up to the quantity of 0, we would go to 80. This demand curve only applies for price prices up to 60. So we don't count that part of the demand curve. The demand curve that does apply goes from this point here to 120. And it's where we're adding this portion. And there is our industry demand curve. What we do is we sum horizontally. We add the quantities to see what, what this illustrates. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So there is our demand curve in a little bit cleaner form. And if you want to see how this looks graphically, the way we can link this up is that above this dotted line where this first demand curve cuts off as far as the quantity goes, above that dotted line, all we have is that segment of the, the senior demand curve, and that is the entire demand curve. Now, below that line, what we do is we add both segments, and we obtain a market demand curve that is flatter, and it is the, the horizontal sum of these two market segments. This works just as well for market segments as it does for individuals in a market. Individuals may have different demand curves for a good, and what we can do is we can think about those individuals and adding horizontally their demand curves to obtain a market demand curve. This example illustrates a case where we have all of the bells and whistles into
to our horizontal addition from the individual demand curves to the market demand curves. Now, let's move on to part two of this example, the supply curve. In this example, we have 12 firms. Each has a total cost of Q squared. Set price equal to marginal cost. Well, if we know the, quant the marginal cost as a function of quantity, all we do is invert that, and that gives us our supply curve. The supply curve is going to be P over 2. Each firm has a supply curve of P over 2. But what we do is just add the quantities, just like the demand side of the equation. Notice what we have in this example is that each firm has an identical supply curve, and so adding the same quantity 12 times, that's just a fancy way of multiplying. So what we can do is we can multiply by the number of firms when we have it in our supply curve form, quantity as a function of price. So in this example, our market supply curve is Q equals 6P. And to complete the picture, let's go ahead and draw that over here on our industry supply curve. So we have our market supply. We have our market demand from the previous part of this exercise. Remember, our market demand for the segment where this is going to be crossing is just 40 minus 1 half P. So how do we find our equilibrium price and quantity? Well, we do just what we did back in the Algebra of Supply and Demand video. We just set the quantities equal. That's going to allow us to solve for the equilibrium price. Now, let's go ahead and get the P's together. Now we've gotten our P's together, we can go ahead and divide and solve for our equilibrium price. Now, once we get our equilibrium price, we can plug back in to either our market demand or market supply curve and obtain our equilibrium quantity. I'm going to plug into the market supply curve. And there is our equilibrium quantity. So to complete the diagram, let's go ahead and label where the price and quantity end up being. So there we have it. We took two segments of, of a market, aggregated their demand to obtain the market demand curve. And we took a, a representative firm and we aggregated it up to get a market supply curve. Then we looked and we used our tools for how we understand to solve for equilibrium price and quantity, and we obtained the market equilibrium. Now this pulls together a lot of the pieces of the puzzle and how to think about market equilibrium, building it up from firms and individuals. Now that is something that helps us tie together all of these pieces, all of these moving parts that we've developed along the way and is a very useful application of economics.